Yeah, chat in. I'm going to mute everybody and then we can get started. Uh, let's see. Uh, some, of the, <clears throat> some of the states are going by outdated uh, laws. Uh, Alabama is illegal to take bees through Alabama on comb. But everybody coming out of Florida, I'm sure they don't go way around Alabama to take bees to the almonds. So it's just an outdated law. Um, it was set up years and years ago to try to control fowl brood. But majority of the bees now, nowadays are all, almost all inspected. And uh, each individual state now, Arizona's got a ban on import export of any kind of bee. And we had to get a special permit or you have to get a, a copy of your actual inspection report if you go into Michigan, not Michigan, uh, Massachusetts. And I think there's one Western state that's that, that strict. But we, we never had any problem shipping bees across state lines. And not, as long as you got your health certificate from the state bee inspector, you get them printed up and you have to have them attached to queen cages that you put in the mail or the box you ship your queens in or nukes or packages. But with this virus, they're spraying everything down. Last year, we, we suffered some pretty bad losses. I mean, when you ship out 400 or 500 queens and you got a 90% kill off and only the center of that box got any bees alive, you know, a lot of it comes back under the shipper, you know. We don't ask them to spray that stupid stuff. You know, they, some of them go overboard. <clears throat> okay. Get those hands up if you guys have questions. Um, don't forget, Don's on a little bit of, of a delay, so give him a second to answer. And I'm old, so I take longer. <laughs> <laughs> Got to grease those wheels a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we're shipping bees and we're, we're shaking bees. And today it's been really raining. Uh, and I try to tell students, if you're gonna be in a commercial setting, you're gonna have to do things that you would not normally do. We was actually out there getting uh, six, or no, it was nine nukes ready to go. We sh uh, shook in the rain, 38 or 40 packages. And if uh, Ken gets on here, he, he can vouch for that. He was one of the students out there in a poncho with Jerry shaking packages. So though, if you're gonna make money, you can't be what I call a fair weather beekeeper. So you're gonna have to do a lot of those things that you wouldn't rather do. And if you get any packages, uh, try to return them back to whoever your uh, shipper was if you're picking up. Most uh, suppliers, they do reuse them. And <clears throat> I found a nice little gizmo and I, maybe a, Dennis seen me use it, the, the can opener. Did you watch me use a can opener? I found a can opener that reverses the can lid. So it opens the can up and it puts it back into the factory state. So when we do our cans, we just poke two holes in them. And a lot of people jab a big knife or a hive hook through there and they throw them away. Well, now all we have to do is buy a lid we run them through this can opener and it reverses the can. It actually opens the flare back up. You put a brand new lid on and seal it. Well, my son kept saying, nah, nah, it ain't gonna work. we have done six of them. i done three with new cans that was punctured and, and used. And I went back in the bee yard and I found about three that was rusty. We reversed the can lid and put a new lid on it, took it upside down and put the holes in it and shook it. And it wouldn't leak just a couple little uh, seepage comes out of that normal hole. So with all my videos, I'm, I guess everybody knows I'm kind of economical or plain cheap. I bought that thing for 50 bucks, but we're spending $3 on an empty can. And I was at the point of saying, I'm gonna go to the store and buy a can of corn for 55 cents, dump the corn out and just reuse the can. Because the empty cans was costing more if they put the corn in it. So it didn't make no sense. So now we've got a bunch of new lids ordered. So if you buy packages from us, you're gonna start getting recycled cans. And if you open your can and you're bringing stuff back, if you would just bring the can back. I know a lot of people think how cheap I am, but if I can save money, eventually I'm passing it on to students. So, you know, I'm trying to put them pennies that will add up into my students' pockets. 
Well, while we have no questions in, I'd like to introduce, we've got two new moderators for the Fat Bee Man uh, Facebook group. Uh, David Grimm, if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe. Yeah, hey, good evening, everybody. David Grimmy with Hepa White Farms over here in West uh, Houston. And so I joined um, a couple very experienced, uh, several very experienced uh, moderators, including Pat that's here tonight and Greg and some others. So been on the job for about uh, two days and he's run me through <laughs> some really rigorous training and uh, we've got uh, all sorts of uh, stuff coming my way every morning and evening. So it's, it's fun to kind of go through that a little bit on Don's website. It's an honor, to be honest. It's really an honor to be asked and to be part of it. So I uh, thank you for that and really excited about it. But um, so we'll just continue to do that and learn at the same time. All right. Thank you, Dave. Glad to have you. Thank you. And where is she? I seen her on here. Elizabeth, do you have your camera on by any chance? No, I can't get my camera to work. Sorry about that. It's all right. Our other moderator is Elizabeth Lake. Go ahead and tell us about yourself, Elizabeth. Well, hi. Um, so I'm pretty new to beekeeping myself, just a few years. My dad actually did beekeeping way back, I don't know, maybe in the 60s in California in the Bakersfield area in the Central Valley where there's a lot of agriculture, but it hadn't really been my thing. It was just something that he used to do. And then I moved to New Mexico a few years ago to go back to school and got into honeybee beekeeping and then started studying sort of the history of honeybees coming to the United States. Sorry, my dog decided she needs to make a lot of noise. <laughs> so uh, I got really involved in the different Facebook groups so that I could learn different techniques. Um, and uh, I keep just one little hive. I'm just a, just a hobbyist myself, um, but I'm really into pollinators and uh, kind of the cultural history of beekeeping. Um, so thank you so much for the invitation. I really appreciate it. Okay, nice having you on board. Thank you. Okay. And let's get those questions in, people. You don't put those hands up, you know what happens. I'm going to start <laughs> calling on you. <laughs> All right, first up is Dennis. Go ahead, Dennis. Hey, Don, can you hear me? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we hear you. I don't have a question. I just have a little something to happen. I stopped in at West, West Memphis coming through you know i drove from your place all the way up to here so i had to stop through and i got into a little joint i shouldn't have got into i'm a little light color well i had to go to the bathroom pick up some coffee and was going into the bathroom i heard a couple of guys talk about this cracker they gonna i knew what they's up to they <laughs> i was in trouble <laughs> and uh i said figure i'm gonna empty my bladder anyway I come out and the old guy says, what are you doing? I said, I just brought 1.8 million bees back with me. And from there on, they just kind of wanted me out of there. They said, really? I just kept walking to the truck, opened up the lid. They let, they just decided he's uninterested in this cracker. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hey, once, once, I said, middle of the night in the wrong place, I knew better. But uh, bees help. <laughs> better than guard dogs. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> But all the high, all the packages made it back. All the queens made it back in good shape. Good. So, I see you kept them nice and toasty by the fireplace. Uh, that fireplace is off. It was uh -huh. just, I took them out of the bed of the truck because it's getting warm. Took them, put them outside and it's getting ready. I had a bunch of buyers. And all of a sudden it dropped like 40 degrees and started misting. And I was like, great. So I rushed them inside the house and all exception of one can that makes a little sticky spot where we have to keep working on they did all right <laughs> good, good. that's all i had okay over to clay go ahead clay yeah um i, I had more questions on the the can sealer and unsealer that don was talking about i've been kind of hunting around for one of those because that's probably going to be a purchase that i need to make at some point pretty quick are you uh, selling packages now uh, no, but I'm starting to get hives built up and I know I'm going to need one eventually. Well, the hand, uh, the canner that we got is a, a hand canner is cranked and you take a standard can and put it in. You have to buy the cans that fit those packages and yeah. they're about four inches in diameter. 
I don't do the ordering. My daughter is. I think she said there are number six cans. Yeah, I was trying to figure out the the canner itself, what like the brand on it and that sort of thing. You would have to get a hold of my son. Uh, the ones that I looked at was three thousand dollars. They have a motor on. He got one. I think it's four or five hundred. It's uh, a hand crank. Mm -hmm. In order to uh, to uh, seal one can, you do three complete revolutions with it. So if you don't have a bunch of students there, you're going to look like Popeye quick. Because one arm is going to get a lot of attention. Yeah. Or you can buy that uh, electric one. Yeah. And then yeah, you know, you're going to have to buy your cans and your lids, too. Oh. If you have somebody close to you, it's a lot cheaper to buy your cans already with syrup in them for the uh -huh. first couple of years. Yeah. Because building packages, um, I believe Dennis built a few here and Frank built a few, uh, Ken to build some. There's a lot more to building packages than what a lot of people think, you know? So if you have a commercial person around, go volunteer to help them for a day and see what all is involved before you make that jump. Yeah. Well, I'm already about mid jump, I think. Well, I would personally, I would stick with selling queens and nukes for a while. If you're going to sell like packages, sure, have get you a, a funnel made and have them bring their hive and then shake uh, a few frames of ease and sell it that way. I'm all for doing the cheapest way you possibly can to you get on your feet a little bit. Oh, there's yeah. Greg. Yeah, that makes sense. But I don't it, know. It, I'm it trying to follow them with all that money in that back of that van there. All them packages selling on the way up there. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out the whole rigmarole, yeah. the comb and all that stuff as far as selling nukes. Yeah. That just that just seems like a headache and a half. Well, check uh, my page for my keepers. And if there's one close to you, offer to go over and, and give my hand one day and just kind of check it out. It yeah. looks different looking into the store than when you're in the store looking back out. It's a whole yeah. different ball game. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out looping around all the different regulations and stuff down here. What state are you in? Texas. Texas. Well, you, you should be able to sell locally. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you should have plenty of buyers right there in Texas. Yeah. Yeah, but like I said, you cross the county and they want you to have a permit. Yeah. I've never heard of that personally, and, and I've been selling bees all over the United States for years. Weird. Yeah. But yeah, I'll uh I'll see if I can't send that the rules and all that. It is weird. You might check with Julie and see if she can locate you one of those canners. Yeah. I mean, That's if you're going to do that, you're still going to have to find a supplier for cans. Yeah. All right. Appreciate it, Don. Okay. okay. Over to Melissa. Go ahead, Melissa. Hey, Don. Hey, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to say we're doing a second route. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're doing a second delivery route, uh, May 5th from Georgia up through Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, and ending up in Illinois. If anybody's interested, get your orders in, please. Gsbees.com, G-S-B-E-E-Z.com. Thank you. Okay. okay, and over to Christine. Go ahead, Christine. Get on mute. There you go. Yeah, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Well, I guess it's uh, afternoon for me and evening for you all. <laughs> um, so that brings a question. When are you guys going to start trucking those bees out here to California? Dawn's bees. Am I going to truck them or is one of well, my students? I don't care who does it. <laughs> well, actually, if you get a hold of Kelly uh, Jordan, he actually was discussing about the pollinating with me when he was over picking up his bees about two weeks ago. And he was talking about jumping on a half a load for someone going out to the pollinate. Hmm. 
That I really personally not. don't do it myself. I I would do local on uh, organic farms. Then I have another question that's okay. that kind of trails off that one, is how do you keep the sweetest peaches? How do you keep them sweet once you've once you've like taken them to different yards and you've got people in Texas and people in other states raising them? How how does the stock stay? <laughs> The if same. you buy my stock from out of state, I would suggest buying some more of my, my stock about every two or three years to kind of refresh that uh, genetics. Now, I always tell my students, if you're going to take them out on a pollinating job out of state, you know, whatever state you're going into, there's a lot of large truck farms. I always tell them, invest in all new queens as soon as you pull them off the pollinate. That way you keep them from being Africanized. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up is Greg, I believe has an update for us. Go ahead, Greg. Anytime you're ready, Greg. He might be in a low spot of going through one of them tunnels up there. Yeah, I don't see him on right now. Oh, there he's he is. On. He's on, he's just not unmuting. Greg, there you go, there you go. Hey, so Sorry about that. Yeah, we're currently, uh, we just dropped off the, uh, the first load and want to thank everybody uh, here on the Fat B-Man chat uh, for uh, supporting us and supporting Don. We're low. We've got a, a pretty pretty rough next couple of days uh, making all the stops, making all the deliveries. But I wanted to say thanks to Ken Thomas and uh, Stephen and Don and Bradley for helping us get loaded today. Uh, we've got this 16-foot trailer uh, just about plumb full. And uh, we're looking at... Uh, we're going to be right on time. So everything's looking really good. The packages look great. Uh, and so we're excited to get on down the road and wanted to just check in real quick and say thanks to everybody uh, for all your support. Uh, we're actually looking at uh, possibly picking up a few extra routes, uh, maybe not this year, but next year. So if anyone is interested uh, in a large load to California or anywhere else in the U.S., hey, let us know. We, we can haul bees. That's, that's not a problem. Um, but uh, anyways, just want to check in. And I know a lot of folks don't really get to see what it looks like uh, when you're hauling bees. And so we're, we're here. We just had our stop here in Dalton, Georgia, and uh, just fueled up and grabbed a quick bite to eat. But uh, this is what we're doing. I don't know if you can see. I'm trying to hold the phone at the same time here. But I know most of you know what a package looks like. But uh, this is our, our second run or our second route this year. Uh, and this thing is, uh, we could have gotten maybe a few more in here, uh, but there's about 250 on this load. And uh, we'll see what happens. And why don't you get in there and, and do another one? But uh, we've got a nuke route coming up here soon, too, uh, delivering nukes all across Ohio. Um, but, uh, anyways, I just wanted to, you never really get to see what, what it looks like on the road when you hear about all of us uh, delivering packages. But uh, this is what it looks like for us. And uh, just again, want to say thanks to Don and everybody else for uh, your support. It helps us with our family farm to keep uh, bees as an enterprise uh, and our, our grow our little family business. So we really appreciate everything you guys do. E, thank you for you for keeping the, uh, the Fat Bee Man website going and the Zoom chats and uh, also uh, the Facebook uh, page going and all the help, the moderators. It's, uh, I can't thank all you guys enough. So I'll, I'll jump off here. I'll just keep babbling. We're going to get back on the road here and get everybody their bees. But I uh, just wanted to quickly just say thanks. We appreciate you guys. And we'll literally see you on down the road. So we'll see you. All right, thanks, Greg. Have, thanks, have a safe Greg. trip. All right, and over to David and Tracy. Go ahead, guys. Hey, uh, back again here. Hey, uh, Christine asked uh, about genetics and how to maintain them once you bring Don's genetics into an area. Uh, what we do is we, we, uh, we get them here, of course, in a, a good quantity of hives. We're about 230 hives now, but we maintain those sweet, um, gentle genetics by uh, doing lots of splits with mated queens from Don's in the first couple of years for sure. And then we also flood the air with uh, drones that we put in with green comb from those hives that we really like. Um, as important is when you have hives that are hot or they're cranky or you got to give them a few times going into them to make sure they're really, you know, uh, a bad bee versus a bad day. 
um, they've had for something that's made them mad, then you need to get rid of the queen and uh, replace her with one of Don's queens and, and to continue you know, that uh, journey. I think you know, we're gonna continue to order B, a, a queens uh, every year in some quantity just to make sure that we're getting that lineage uh, maintained in our bee yards and then doing all the other things that we're doing that I described. So that's, that's our solution. And then uh, real quick on the, the Texas law for permits across state lines. It, I was just reading here as we were talking, it's, it's $35 if you're doing 12 or more hives that you're trans, transporting and they're hives, not packages. And uh, if you have more than 12 hives and you own more than 12 hives, you're exempt from the fee, but it's good for a year. So just for that. And then lastly, uh, a question for Don. Um, so Don, we have a few production hives for honey. Most of them are nukes. Um, we, we bring you know, the population up with fructose and, and then you know, we've cut it off basically with any uh, outside feed or pollen. And I'm ready to switch to my buckets into water to start giving them the immediate source of water. Is, is uh, I'm not, and using the buckets, you know, bucket uh, a method that Greg and you have helped me with, but is there any other things that I need to consider for that? Well, if you're gonna switch from the corn syrup to water, I would suggest draining the bucket completely, rinsing it out and just dumping that, whatever you rinse it out onto a, like a 55 gallon lid, let the bees recycle that. Because if you fill the bucket up with water and you have any fructose in there, it's gonna to try to ferment on you or it'll okay. take the bucket and turn it black. Just, you probably experienced that already when you're mixing sugar water up in a jar, the jar yeah. starts to turn black because it's a low volume, creates moisture or it creates a fungus in there. Okay, awesome, thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, next up is Robbie. Go ahead, Robbie. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Okay, good. I got a couple of my neighbors who would love to have my honeybees. Now I heard if you have people have raised bees on your property, you have to um, charge them. So what is the average fee that I would charge my neighbors. To set bees or to sell them bees? Uh, for me to, for me to raise. Um, if you're asking us about to raise bees on your neighbor, you're talking about a rent fee? Well, look, I don't want to, I heard if you give, to put bees on somebody's property and you, and you walk to them, you should um to charge certain you right. I charge put bees on people's property. Right. Right. So you have to decide what you want for your high to rent. Right. Okay. Does that answer your question? I was just I was just trying to get um a rough um estimate. What's he want him for? Is he pollinating or just wants to work bees? Um, they want honey. Well, they could always buy it from you. That's true. <laughs> Probably be cheaper than, uh, than yeah, a yeah, hive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I would just the honey. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay. All right. Pat, do you have something to add to that, maybe? Yep. Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, Robbie, I have a friend that rents hives out. He does really well with uh, master gardeners that want bees to, for pollination in their yard. They just want a small hive. And so he charges $300 up front. He has a contract that says how many times he's allowed in the yard to work the bees and that they will call him if there's a swarm or if there's any problem and how much honey he will give them at the end of the year. So you've got to figure out how many times, and you're looking at a minimum, and that's bare minimum of five full inspections a year. And then all of the time traveling back and forth. If that's the only thing you want to do, you could work yourself to death and not really come out with a lot of extra money 
It sounds like it when you hear $300, all the bells go off, but travel time, the what happens if somebody goes over there and steals your bees or you go back to work the bees and the guy goes, Oh, I don't know what bees you're talking about. That's my hive. <laughs> then, you know, so th right. that kind of stuff happens though. So mm -hmm. if you do it, have a written contract up front as to what the expectations are on both sides and uh, you know, charge them what you want, what you can get away with, but you're better off. And if some people are limited to how many hives they can have in their backyard too. So if, like if you can only have four or five and you want 10, you could get a couple of out yards by this program and, you know, get a lot more honey, but tell them up front how much honey you're going to give them. And only if their hive produces, because hives don't produce a large amount every year. It varies from year to year. So don't, don't guarantee more than you're able to provide as far as how much honey they're going to get. All right. That's all. Great. Thanks, Pat. Is that good, Robbie? Pretty good. All right. And next up is Elizabeth. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Hey, okay. Yeah, thanks. So I wanted to go back to this idea of then uh, once you get these gentle genetics and you keep the genetics in your area. And one of the steps is, uh, you know, I think all of us would have thought of Queens, but I, I wouldn't have thought of maintaining drones, you know, and uh, getting more drones into the area, which of course is so obvious. But um, so with that, then if you're using as part of your technique, this, you know, step of adding in more of the drone comb, the green frames so that you can get more of these genetics into the area. Do you then step up drone culling as part of your Varroa management? Or uh, have you had any problems with then adding extra drone frames in and having then accidentally creating a, a drone, um, a Varroa situation in your hives? I just wanted to see if we could talk a little bit more about that. Thanks. Don, you want to get that or? Well, uh, it's just like when a lot of people come over and take classes and it's like driving a car. You know, you just don't jump in the car and head somewhere. If you're going to get into beekeeping, first, you got to tell me what you're trying to accomplish. You're, you're going to make honey. Are you going to sell queens? Are you going to make honey production? Now, if you're going to make honey production, you know, you might not want to put a lot of drone comb in there. If you're make, mating queens, yes, then you want to add some in there. So that's that's kind of a tricky question uh, but by maintaining a good brood with a balance of your drones in there and keeping the bees gentle you're going to be able to work those where a lot of people won't work a hive and a good example of that is today ken was out there and i had other people out there pouring down rain and when i go to bee clubs and i talk to bee clubs and, and give my little lectures and stuff there Everybody says, well, if the clouds are out there, you don't work your bees. If it's drizzling a little bit, you don't work your bees. We work, or Ken worked, and Jerry worked, and there was another one out there, working in the rain with a poncho, getting nukes ready and packages. So genetics, I think, helps play a big part of all this here. And I, I don't know if Ken, yeah, Ken's still here. They can explain exactly what was going on and how many times he got stung or ate up. Because people tell you, you're going to get ate up if you go out there in the rain. Hey, can y'all hear me okay? Yep. Yeah, uh, I got stung uh, three times this entire weekend, and it both uh, all three times were before I suited up. As soon as I got there, got out of the truck, they were just on me for some reason, and uh, I think I walked into the path of a few of them and ticked them off. But we were down there in the rain. Uh, now, of course, there were a lot more bees there. They were all home. None of them were hardly out foraging. And, uh, you know, we had a whole bunch of them bouncing off of our veil, but it honestly, it's okay. It's greater numbers, but it's what happens every time you open up a hive anyway. So if you do want to make money, rain's not an excuse not to get out there and work your hives. <laughs> uh, luckily we didn't have to uh, dodge any thunder though. So we were, we were pretty good with that. Okay. Thanks. All right. And back to Pat, go ahead, Pat. Well, back to her question about drones. 
you're going to have your bees on a regular rotation of when you're spraying oxalic acid or whatever your mite control method is going to be. But you have, and I use drone comb as part of my mite control. Um, so if you put that in, in 24 days, that entire frame of drones roughly is going to emerge. You have to put on your calendar that that frame is going to emerge because what you've set off is a mite bomb. Mites love to reproduce in drone comb because the drones take longer to emerge. And if you don't treat in accordance to when your drones are emerging, you're gonna have a huge mite load. So you need to take that into consideration when you're putting your drone frames in, but it's an excellent way to maintain your genetics. Okay, thank and you. When you get the drone comb now, you know, if you're talking about trying to keep it as natural, on that 22nd day, you need to take those frames and freeze them. Or if you got chickens, feed them to the chickens. Uh, the thing you need to take into consideration is if you're gonna make honey, it takes a lot of honey or resources to feed all them drones. So there might be a better way to control mites. You know, either make a few splits, break the mite cycle that way, or I've done organic treatments in the past and mixing up wintergreen spearmint and a little bit of tea tree and your feet. When the bees feed the larva, that mixture, the, the mites are less likely to reproduce in the cells. You know, it's not a foolproof, it's not 100%, it's a slow, way of maintaining mites. And then, you know, people want to do sugar shakes. If you really want to be more accurate, I would suggest find your queen before you ever do a alcohol wash and get you about a half a cup of bees and do that route. But I hear a lot of people that get in there and they listen to so many ways to do things, they get all excited and they shake bees into a cup and dump the alcohol in there and then you see the queen floating. So look before you leap. I mean, there's a lot of ways to skin the cat. And I always keep saying that, you know. Okay, uh, David and Tracy, you guys got something to add to that? Hey, real quick. Yeah, I think uh, Don's always talk, taught uh, common sense beekeeping. And it's so true. Every time I, I think about what I'm doing, just, you know, think about common sense. And it does depend what you want to do, uh, Elizabeth, with your drones. Um, but what I try to do is, I want the genetics to maintain, um, and and I, I use drones a little less for my control uh, than I would otherwise because I want those drones in the air uh, when they're mating, and so I'll treat several weeks in a row with oxalic acid just to make sure I'm catching those dr uh, drones as they come out uh, or, or the rest of the hive and making it clean with uh, with mites. Thanks. Okay. I answer your question, Elizabeth? Hopefully. Maybe. Okay. Oh, yes. Thanks. Sorry. I wrote thanks in the chat because I didn't know if I was unmuted. <laughs> oh, okay. I see it now. All right. Over to Christine. Go ahead, Christine. Unmute. Maybe. Maybe. Christine, are you there? All right, we'll come back to Christine. Uh, Ken, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Don touched on it. I just wanted to say, uh, doing the uh, uh, drone calling, it's it's a huge uh, expenditure of resources. Uh, they, they're spending all that time feeding the drone larvae, and they're using a lot of honey and everything, all of it were to be wasted. I just like keeping up on regular mite treatments. Uh, you know, oxalic acid is pennies on the dollar when you're doing the uh uh treatments and it, it's really just a better way to go for me because if you're taking a whole frame away especially in the middle of a uh, a good flow that's just that much more energy that they could have been using to grow and grow and grow and uh you, you can really take away from a hive but like i said don already touched on it <laughs> all right thank you christine are you with us now oh yeah sorry it's <laughs> okay my <laughs> Got my husband starting the potato soup and I had to give a few instructions. <laughs> um, so I have a few nukes that I um, I put some uh, splits in with some really beautiful queen cells. And 
the there's a good number of bees in there. I just peeked in the top yesterday because we have a storm moving in here right now. And I know that the queen might have just hatched out. I mean, the queen cell might have just, and I didn't want to disturb anything at all. Um, but my question is more about treatment for mites because I do, I know that I have mites, number one, and I do have a deformed wing virus um, issue. Um, I can see them uh, like in two or three of my colonies. Um, not a huge number of deformed wing virus, but uh, one or two bees here and there, which means I know if I see one or two bees, there's probably a lot more of them, obviously. But I want to treat the nukes, and I'm wondering if the powdered sugar method, because I have the entry hole will, will not fit my oxalic acid wand. I usually use an OH vapor or a uh, gas, whatever you call it. Um, but my wand won't fit in the entrance of my nuke or, and I, you know, it's got a solid bottom board on it. And it's just got a little tiny entrance. So I'm wondering if the powdered sugar, if I could just sprinkle some on that, if it helps at all. Yeah. Don if, says, you, if you're seeing K wing or deformed wing, you're, you're in advanced stage. Now, I don't usually suggest using liquid OA, but you're in a situation right now where I would risk it if it was mine because you're in the later stages. Once you start seeing that, you've already got them pretty bad. You can take a garden sprayer or a mist bottle and mist OA across it. Uh, the reason I don't suggest that for the average person, because if, if you get the OA on the queen, you could kill the queen or you could damage her, but you've got a queen cell. If the queen cell is uh, sealed, you have less chance to damage that queen and you could treat that mite problem a lot faster. I'm pretty sure she's, um, uh, I don't know when the queen cell was um, capped exactly, but when I put it in the nuke box, it was. Did you cut it out or did you put the whole frame? I put the whole frame in there. Was that the only cell? No, there was two or three cells on each. I would check it the very next day. I don't know how many hours difference you are, but you can, those queens will hatch out sometimes three hours, sometimes a day or a day and a half apart. And then if you got a lot of them on that, sometimes you could get a dozen hatch out within an hour of each other. Uh, that's why I come up with that queen castle deal where you can make four splits where you can't cut. The next option you have is get you some cell protectors. If you don't have cell protectors, do you have any kind of small pill bottles? Yeah, I, and I've seen your videos on the on the cell per, the cell cages and stuff like that. I have definitely take a small a ton. get a one eighth inch drill bit and drill a dozen holes around it, and you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of brood. But you can take the pill bottle and just you like screw it back and forth over one of the queen cells. Get leave one open, and then the other ones put that on. And that way, even if you're a day late, those screens will hatch out and they won't kill each other. Okay, so um, how do you do the oxalic acid mist? How do you, I, I mean, I have the crystals. Do you just dissolve it in water? You can dissolve it in water. The best thing to do is get on Randy Oliver's page. He'll go into more of the details on doing that. I, you know, I basically don't like to suggest it, but you're at the point where you're either going to lose that hive or you're going to have to do some drastic treatment. Now, there's a lot of ways you can treat mites, you know, on the low end of the kill scale. Mineral oil on a paper towel, the bees will walk on it. It's a very slow kill. It suffocates the mites. But, you know, in your stage, you want something a little bit faster because you're going to knock population down fast if you don't do something. Usually when you start seeing them walking around the ground, you're in later stages. Yeah, I, and I did have a very bad deformed wing virus problem um, two years ago, and so I, I've been on a really, I, I've, I've been treating like, not constantly, that would be the wrong word, but I've been you treating a lot. Your uh, bottom boards are nailed to your high boxes? Um, actually, I run screen bottom boards. Well, you have an opening in the front? Yes. Well, you should be able to slide a wand in there. Oh, that I can do. That I can do for my um, big boxes, but my little nuke boxes only have like a three inch by three eighths inch opening, and my wand won't fit in there. 
Well, what I would suggest doing instead of a solid bottom like that is I'd build a standard bottom board for a five frame and then you can slide that wand in there. Yeah. Or maybe I'll just have to put them in a bigger box and then treat them. Well, if you got cool weather, I wouldn't put them in a bigger box because you're going to have, you know, cooling nights yet. No, we're going to we're going to get into the snow tonight. And then after that, I guess we're warming up into the 75. So I'm going to wait for two more days. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Christine, I think uh, David has something for you. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, um, Don's exactly right. Randy Oliver um, with scientific beekeeping, he's got all sorts of of methods. Uh, one I'm going to try this year, I've been using exclusively oxalic acid vapor with the ProVap, and I've used the wand as well, and it works. But uh, he's got a new one out that's uh, with, a, with a Swedish sponge. If you don't know what that is, you can go to Amazon and figure it out. But uh, you really just mix, uh, you know, uh, oxalic acid in solution with uh, glycerol or glycerin, I think, and um, just soak it into the sponge and let it sit on and it really does a kill over like a, a three to four month period and it brings the mites down in his study to zero. So I think, you know, just you know, look at that and that maybe might, might help you a little bit, but I'm really excited about trying it. Uh, oxalic acid is the way to go for sure. It's, but it's, uh, it's, you know, getting enough contact with it over time. Thank you. One version that you could do with that is you could take cardboard and you could cut it into like a four by six or a four by seven piece, soak it in your oxalic acid with the glycerin, and then it's wow. going to be a slow release. Hmm. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of versions of doing things out there. And at my age, you know, I don't mention something unless I've tried it and something that it works. And I don't try to promote other people's ideas because, you know, I don't know the result. And I, I'm like, I'm from Missouri. I want to see what it's doing and what they'll do. Are you guys talking about putting the sponges and the cardboard on top of the frames? No, you just use the cardboard. The sponge is just like uh, the, the fabric softeners. You're going to get bees tangled up in it. You're going to get them chewing up that sponge and dragging out a lot of debris. And if you got a, a limited entrance, it's going to plug your entrance. The cardboard does do a good job. We've tried a lot of different ways. When you run several thousand hives, you can't afford 40, 50 percent losses. You know, if you get over three percent, you better jump back and rethink your approach to what you're doing. Where does the cardboard go, Don? We lay ours across at a 90 degree across the, the bottom in the brood box. Okay. It's, the, it's the cheapest way other than your, your fogging right, or your vaporizing. The bottom of the brood box, but on the top of the frame. The top of the frames. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. Sometimes the simple things that you think that don't work are more effective than those big gizmos that they want you to pay high dollars for. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Over to Robbie. Go ahead, Robbie. Go ahead, Robbie. Okay, a um, couple of weeks ago, I was cleaning out my nuke box to get it ready for packs of bees. Now, on the bottom of the um, bottom board is run on an air. You just muted yourself, Robbie. Don on the phone, but he would do it, but he says, use, you got I can still. We can do you Robbie. want. Hello? We keep losing you. You keep uh, muting yourself or something. Oh, uh, I just, just, I'm using my old phone right now. Um, I get my packs of bees Monday. Um, that's the shipment date. Question, do you want the pictures of my bottom board to see how is, I'm losing that board on the bottom a little bit at a time. If you got a regular bottom board on there, you, you should be all right. Okay. Or do you have a, a problem with mice or something getting the box? Um, I don't know. It's 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 actually breaking. I think it's rot. I think it's dry rotted or or something. I if don't know. Dry rotted. It's not going to really hurt nothing. 
if you okay. have mice in there that has been there like over winter, what we do is we take and clean the box out, and you can take an air gun, blow it out, or a wire brush. And if you got a pine tree around there, get a pine bough and just take the pine needles and put a glove on and just rub the heck out of the box inside all around. It's best if you got a peach tree, but you know, a lot of people don't have peach trees. <laughs> It takes that hmm. smell away, and the bees will stay in there a lot better. Wow. I did use bleach water after I was talking to you. Mm -hmm. You um, sanitize it. Yeah. Okay. Answer your question, Robbie? Yeah. Um, yeah, hold on. Oh. I just got me a brand new um hive tool um on for me and Lake. You muted again, yeah. Robbie. Uh, <laughs> hi. <laughs> okay. I just got me a new hive tool a few months ago. And it's up different ones. What is the difference between one from the other? What is what is different with it? Between the hive tools. Uh, I don't see that's that looks like the kind yeah. that I use. Yeah, the, the, I was the, the some kind that they have. Don't dull it. They're usually way too sharp. Yeah. <laughs> I have one of each. I like the J hook myself for separating frames and stuff, but it's just a matter of preference, mm -hmm. really, Bobby. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Don, Don, tell us more about this rubbing peaches on the inside of your 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 boxes. It's What's that? Peach leaves. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of old things that these old beekeepers done in the past, you know. But if you store hives in the high bodies, if it's got wax in there, sometimes you get wax moth, and sometimes if you crisscross them, you get the the mice in there, or sometimes those field mice. Mm -hmm. And they make a nest in there. They poop. They pee in there. And if you put a package in there, sometimes the package won't stay. But what we usually do is clean it out, go with a brush, and we take pine needles mm -hmm. and just get you because there's going to be a lot of sap on them. Get you a glove mm -hmm. and just rub the heck out of the inside of that box, mm -hmm. and the the bees will stay a lot better that way. Mm -hmm. And the peach uh, leaves it's it's what we've done basically for the same thing, but. A lot of people don't have peach trees in their yard. Mm -hmm. If they do, they don't want to pull the leaves off of it. <laughs> nice. Okay. I thought maybe that was part of your sweetest peaches uh, routine. Well, that would be a good slogan, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, nobody with questions? Well, Brett's going to give us on an update. I told you. Brett's got an update? Okay. Got an update. You're on the spot, Brett. Go ahead. Hey everybody, how's it going? First, I want to know, do I get five cents per can if I bring it back? Well, I haven't got to that point yet. I'm <laughs> every student should save the time, save the money. Even if you don't bring your cages back to me, take a few bee clubs. You know, right now there's a lot of people that are doing removals. And I've had several students that came and actually used those packages inside a 10 frame box with a shop back. And when the, the package gets full, they put a closure on it and they put another package in there and they can clean out a side of a wall, do removals. There's other uses for them. I can't see building them things and just throwing them in a pile and burning them. Interesting. <laughs> uh, we lost you, Brett. Brett, you're still muted or something. He must have come unplugged. And he can't hear me, I guess. Hopefully sometime this year. If not, definitely next year. We, we didn't hear most of that, Brett. You were muted or something. Oh, my internet keeps popping uh -huh. out. Okay. So I was just doing this. Yeah, yeah we were laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're doing good. Every, everything's going well. Bees are making queen cells like crazy. Just did some grafting. Nice. 
That's it. We done with the snow up here in the Northeast, do you think? I really hope so, man. <laughs> I mean, this little cold snap we just had a couple days ago. Did you get snow up there? Oh, yeah. We hit probably a good two inches or so. Uh, Terrible. Yeah. Some of my, I don't think some of my queens went out and made it. I think they're going to be drone layers, but mm. we'll see. I'm sure Don will send you more. Now he will. He <laughs> a hundred packages up to up here in New York. They went out Monday. You did. Yep. Steve Chan, he's one. Of, he's on our page, I guess. Oh yeah. The keepers. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He brought a hundred up. I told him it's a little cold up there, but he, he said, "No, nah, it's good. Good weather." Yeah, you can get it done. <laughs> All righty. Uh, go ahead, Dennis. Don, can you hear me? Yep, I hear you. Yeah, Don told me, he said, wait. I, about three years ago, I was trying to get him in early April. He said, you better wait. I held off the end of April. I left Georgia. It was 80 degrees. I got up here and it snowed down to 20 degrees. Now, the sad part about it, I had enough frames of honey. I didn't have to worry about the syrup too much. I put a frame in each one right next to them. But it looks like all of them that didn't, that put them on um, foundation, did survive but boy you take a chance yeah. um main reason i got on here don now normally i just treat the mites i just test them with the alcohol wash these new packages what do you recommend just i know they don't have any brood they're just now starting to have some eggs well when your packages shouldn't have mites on them because you know we keep up on our treatments pretty well right. And I've had people that would email me about bought packages from other suppliers. What should they do? If you're going to do anything, I mean, to me, it'd be like tooting out there in the wind. You could take some powder sugar and drop it on the side of the package and take a brush and brush it back and forth. About a quarter of a cup, roll the bees around in the package and hope if it knocks the mites off. But I would think if you bought any packages from any supplier, that right now, this time of the year, they've already been treated. So I think it's a wasted movement. It's probably a suggestion that was put on Facebook or on the internet and people take a, a little bit of noise and they make it a big to do about, you know? So some things you worry about and some things you don't have to worry about. Normally I don't worry about it, but I have, you know, they ask me questions and I said, yeah. I don't think you have to worry about it now, yeah. but <laughs> They don't pay much attention to some advice anyway. I told them stay out of their boxes and they're in and out and in and out. I'll be selling Queens or they'll be calling you. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing you can suggest to them, make their job easier, tell them to go to the hardware store and buy a case of those hinges. That way to get in and out of high <laughs> That might work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All righty. All right. Uh, if there's no more questions, going once, going twice. All right, that'll wrap it for tonight. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you in two weeks and stick around for the after chat if you'd like to talk amongst yourselves. Thanks, Don. Okay, thank you to everybody for showing up. Have a good night. Thanks, Thank Don. I'll stay around.